Hi students, welcome to exercise 24, sketching logarithmic functions. So we kind of did that in uh, exercise 23, but this lesson will be specifically about sketching this function, the log function. Okay, so again, like we did in 23, we're going to take a look at the exponential function and its inverse, so the log function, and just uh, kind of make the connection between the two. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch the y equals 3 to the power of x function. Hope you guys recognize that one. You're going to pass by the point 0, 1, and the 1, 1, 3. And you're going to have something that looks like that with an asymptote right here. Right? Okay? So here, uh, for my log function, it's simply the inverse, which means every point will be switched from x and y. So the point 0, 1 becomes the point 1, 0, the point 1, 3, becomes the point 3, 1. We now have a vertical asymptote here, and you have this function. Okay, so the two functions are inverses of each other. Okay, and this is the function we're going to focus on today. So instead of sketching the exponential function every single time to get this function, let's take a look at some of the details of this function here. Notice that the base is 3. So the first point will be the point 3, 1. If the base was 4, we'd have the point 4, 1, very much like the exponential function here. Also, we're always going to pass by the point 1, 0, because think about it. If the, every exponential function passes by the point 0, 1, every log function will pass by the point 1, 0. And we'll, describe, we'll go into details a little bit more later than that. Okay, so a couple things. The graph of y equals log base 3 of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Right, so this asymptote is right here. And uh, the reason for that is we have a restriction of the argument, right? We know that the argument has to be positive, also cannot be zero. So here, the domain of this function is x is larger than zero, which is kind of described by this graph. Notice that there's no graphs over here. So the domain of this function is x is larger than zero. So that's the restriction on the argument. Okay, so let's sketch uh, these three different graphs. We'll sketch them all in the same Cartesian plane. Okay, so we have log base 2 of x, so that point, so I'm going to put this one blue, okay, so log base 2 of x is going to pass by the point 0, 1, okay, so again, that's a point for all log functions, and because the base is 2, we're going to have the point 2, 1, okay, so that's the base of 2. Uh, notice that there is a vertical asymptote right here, and you have... Uh, the function. I'm going to add another point to this since we can. We have the space here. So if you think of an exponential function, the original the point would be 0, 1, and then 1, 2, and at 2 you'd be 4 because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So it's just the inverse of that. So instead of that having that, we're going to have the point 4, 2. And since we have the space here, we'll have the point 8, 3. Okay, because think about it, just uh, I'll put a little graph on here. If you have x is equal to uh, 0, maybe we do an x, y little chart here. I'll just do this for the first one. So if x equals to 0, well, there's no value. If x equals to 1, okay, so if x equals to 1, 2 to the power of what gives you 1? Well, it's 2 to the power of 0, so we'd have y, 0. Um, so maybe let's re write it as an exponential here. 2 to the power of y equals x. So what I'm inserting is only the op honestly the opposite. If I insert y equals 0, 2 to the power of 0 gives 1. So for the log function, you might want to start inserting y values here to get the value of x. So if y is equal to 1, x is equal to 2. If y is equal to 2, then x equals to 4. See how you got those points? And if y is equal to 3, x equals to 8. So those are the three points. So the graph's going to look something like this. Okay, go around and whoop, miss that point, but I think you get the idea. Okay, next graph. Put that one in red. So log base 4 of x. So again, we're going to pass by the point 0, 1. Okay, or sorry, 1, 0. And the next point will be at 4, 1 over here. Okay, and because the base is 4, we won't be able to get another point. Okay, because if you were to plug in y equals 2, 4, so it's going to be back here, 4 
to the power of 2 gives you 16. I don't have x equals 16. Okay, so again, we'll have an asymptote here. Draw the asymptote, so that asymptote exists as well. Um, this graph will be a little bit more curved, and going to go up a little bit slower, so it's going to look like that. Okay, and the last one, we'll make this one black. This is a log base 10 graph. So notice I can't even put my, my first point here, because we're going to pass by the point zero, or 1, 0, but then the next point would be a 10, 1. So I'm going to kind of insert this point. We're going to have to extend this graph a little bit. So this would be 9, and we're going to put 10 here. So that would be our next point, because the base is 10. We're going to pass by the point 1, 0, and our graph... Let's hopefully get that right. Oh, that's pretty good. Close enough. And that's what our graph would be. Okay, right, a couple details to mention. All the graphs pass by the point 1, 0. So that's any log graph, as long as we don't have transformations, will all pass by this point. Uh, and the base of the logarithm determines the next point. So that's this point we're talking about here. The base is 2, we have the point 2, 1. The base is 4, 4, 1. And the base is 10, 10, 1. Okay. Again, the reason for that point, I kind of described one in the graph there, or on the table. But if you have y equals log base x2, you put that in exponential form, which I did, 2 to the power of y equals x. If I replace y with 1, you get x equals 2. So that's how you get the point 2, 1, right? So yeah, if y equals 2, sorry, if y equals 1, x equals 2. And that's the point 2, 1. Okay, in this next example, we're working with a log base 5 graph, and we're doing some transformations on it. So the log base 5 graph, maybe I'm going to sketch those two points to start. So we're going to have the point 1, 0, okay, so that's for any log graph. And we're also going to have the point 5, 1. So I'm a little bit off the graph here. So I'm going to extend it just so we can be a little bit more precise. I don't know if that's well extended, but that'll be a 5 here. So because that's a log base 5 graph, these are our original points. This is the parent graph. And then we're just doing the transformations. Okay, so the transformations are, I hope you guys can tell, this is 2 to the left, right? And this would be 1, so 1 down, negative 1. So I do both those transformations to these points, right? So I'm going to move 2 to the left and 1 down. So you'd have this point right here at negative 1, negative 1. And 2 to the left, 1 down, you're going to have x equals 3. Okay, so notice that the asymptote will have moved as well. So normally the asymptote would be at x equals 0, but because we moved it 2 to the left, our asymptote is now at x equals negative 2. And our graph is going to look something like this. There we go. Sorry about the shape, it's not perfect there, but I think the general idea is there. Okay, a couple pieces of information. Now state the domain. Notice that the argument here is x plus 2. So you can find the domain anytime just by taking the argument and saying that the argument has to be larger or equal to 0. So the, the domain will be x plus 2 has to be larger than 0. Not equal to, sorry, because that's where the asymptote is. And if I solve for x, you bring the 2 over the other side, you have x is larger than negative 2, which represents this. If you look at your graph, x is larger than negative 2. All the, all the on the right side of negative 2, you have values. So you could write it like that, or obviously you could write it saying from negative 2 to infinity. Don't forget you're not including negative 2 because it's larger than negative 2, not larger or equal to. So this would be or. Okay, I, I think this might be a good strategy, expect, especially for harder graphs. Now determine the y-intercept. Okay, so I'd like to know what the value of the y-intercept would be, and that's the value over here. Okay, so I have to plug in x equals 0. So we're going to have y equals to log base 5 of 0 plus 2 minus 1. And simplify, this would be log base 5 of 2 equals minus 1. Okay, so now we're going to have to do some estimation. Because without a calculator, you cannot calculate this. Uh, but yeah, let's take an estimation of what log base 5 of 2 would be. So I'm just going to go over the side here. So let's figure out what log base 5 of 2 would be. Let's make it equal to t. So 5 to the power of t equals to 2. What would that be? We know that 5 to the power of 0 is 1. 
and we know 5 to the power of 1 is 5. So 5 to the power of what would approximately give me 2? I don't know, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.3? We're going to say 0 0.3 just to, to have a value. So I'm saying that this is approximately 0 0.3. So what you have is y is approximately equal to 0 0.3 minus 1. Y is approximately going to be equal to negative 0 0.7. So let's take a look at our graph. Well, that makes about sense, right? Negative 0 0.7, that's about right. Okay? So without a calculator, you would not be able to calculate this exactly, but we can give a good, good estimation. And on the last page, last example, uh, sketch the graph of the function y equals log base 3, 3 minus x plus 1. So what we have here, um, again, transformations. If you guys recognize that we have a value in front of the x that's not 1, we have a negative 1. So my suggestion, as before, is to factor this. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. So I'm going to factor that negative. So you have y equals 2 log base 3 of negative x minus 3 plus 1, okay? So our log base 3 graph, that's our base graph, so we're going to pass by the point 1, 0 and 3, 1. So you have to identify the log base graph that you're working with. This is a parent graph, and now we've got to do some transformations. So first thing, this negative, notice this negative is in front of the x, which means it's a reflection over the y-axis, right? So let's go over here. So you do a reflection. Let's do the points one at a time. So we start with a reflection. So our first point would be here and here. Our next transformation would be the plus three to the right. So everything moves over three to the right. So three to the right here. So we got a point here and a point here. And then the next transformation, you go one up. And this will be our final graph. I'll make that green. Make sure it's like clear we have different colors. So we got one up. We have this value here, and we've got this value over here. Okay, so now what happened with our asymptote? Okay, so the asymptote, uh, let me just check something first. Yep. Okay, the asymptote, in my eyes, the easiest way to do it would be to find the domain. Sounds funny, but if you find the domain, you'll know where the asymptote should be. So I know that this has to be positive. So 3 minus x has to be larger than 0. That's the argument, and the argument has to be positive. And when we say positive in, in uh, math, we mean larger than 0. So now if I solve for this, if I bring the x over to the other side, I get 3 is larger than x, which means x is smaller than 3. When you read this, it's easier to read it in terms of x instead of left to right. So here, x is smaller than 3. Well, I know that means 3 is our asymptote, and our graph is going to go this way. So this tells us, therefore, this is supposed to be three dots, therefore, uh, x equals three is the uh, vertical asymptote. So our vertical asymptote is at three. I'll try to give a nice line here. Okay, and then our graph will do something like this. Okay, so to determine the characteristics of the graph, the domain, we've actually already calculated the domain, it's over here. So the domain is x is smaller than 3, or you could obviously say from negative infinity to 3. Again, not included. Okay, the, the range of the graph, notice the graph will continue to go up slowly, but will go up and goes all the way to the bottom. So the range of pretty much any logarithmic function is negative infinity to infinity, or you could say y is the element of all real numbers. Okay, the x-intercept, okay, so that's going to be calculated when y equals to 0. So we're going to do a little bit of work here. So if x-intercept is y equals 0, you're going to have 0 equals to log base 3 of 3 minus x uh, plus 1. And I'm going to have to solve for x here. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is kind of the introduction of solving logarithmic equations. So I'm going to move the 1 over here. So I'm going to have negative 1 equals to log base 3, 3 minus x. 
And when I'm here, when I have an expression with log base 3 of something, so that's the argument, equals to one value, nothing anywhere else, I'm going to put this in exponential form. So if you put it in exponential form, what you're going to get is base 3, so 3, to the power of negative 1 equals to the argument, which is 3 minus x. And I can now solve this for, solve for x. So 3 to the power of negative 1 is 1 third, and I'm going to subtract 3 on each side. Sorry, that's a 3. Do a better job of putting 3 there. Okay, so 1 third minus 3 equals to negative x. Okay, so a little bit of math here, a little bit of algebra. 1 third minus 3, 3 is 9 over 3, so I'm changing it to a common denominator. This gives us negative 8 over 3 equals to negative x, and therefore uh, 8 thirds is equal to x. So that's an 8. Okay, and again, take a look at your graph. 8 thirds makes about sense. 8 thirds is right about here. So we, our graph's pretty good. And the y-intercept, okay, so that's when x equals to 0. So our graph can tell you what it is, but I think we'll calculate it algebraically again. So you have y equals to log base 3 of 3 minus 0 plus 1. So you have y equals to log base 3 of 3 plus 1. I'll keep the brackets there. So notice that if I want to find the, the value of this expression, 3 to the power of what gives us 3? Well, that's 1. So this is y equals to 1 plus 1, which is 2. Notice where our graph passes by, it's y equals to 2. And equation of the asymptote, well, that's, again, we've already calculated that. That's x equals to 3. Okay, so a little bit of new work here. Uh, be careful, this is stuff we need to know how to do. Um, we'll go, we're going to see this more often in exercise 25 and, th and so on, but I think these are maybe a little bit more complicated and uh, probably worth explaining again or listening to again just to make sure you get the details. Good luck, guys.